Hey guys, welcome to Automation Anywhere full course. In this full course, we will cover the core topics of Automation Anywhere. Automation Anywhere is well known robotic process automation tool. It has grown in popularity over the years and is now used by organizations all over the world. Automation Anywhere enables IT departments to set up software robots that collect and interpret data in various applications assisting businesses in successfully automating their business operations. Here is the list of topics covered in the Automation Anywhere full course. We'll first begin with what is RPA. Then we'll look at the 10 reasons to learn RPA. Followed by which we will see some of the real-time RPA examples. Proceeding further, we will see installation of Automation Anywhere and Automation Anywhere tutorial. We will see how Excel operations are performed in Automation Anywhere. Proceeding further, we will see some of the important interview questions that will help you crack Automation Anywhere interview. Proceeding further, we will see RPA developer salaries and finally, how to become an RPA developer. I am sure you are excited to get started with the Automation Anywhere full course. But before we begin, Make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and clicked on the bell icon so you never miss an update from Simply Learn. So without wasting any further time, let's get started with Automation Anywhere full course. This is Jim. He is an accountant in a multinational company. He handles several invoices and other financial records like monetary transactions, liabilities, checks and ledgers on a daily basis. One of his tasks is to copy all the relevant information from these invoices, such as the name of the company, invoice ID, and date of processing into a spreadsheet, and mail the sheet along with other financial reports to his superiors by the end of the day. As any prompt employee, he transfers all the information to the sheet, attaches the reports, and sends them over to his boss via email every day. But over a period, he starts finding this task to be time-consuming and repetitive. Frustrated, Jim looks for a way to reduce the time and effort it takes to complete the task. And voila! He stumbles across Robotic Process Automation, aka RPA. Using Robotic Process Automation, he builds a simple bot that extracts information from several invoices into an Excel sheet, attaches all the necessary financial reports, and sends them over to his superiors via email at a specific time every day. So, what exactly is Robotic Process Automation? Robotic Process Automation RPA, is the use of software with artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities to handle high-volume, repetitive tasks that previously required humans to perform. Some of these tasks include addressing queries, making calculations, maintenance of records, and performing transactions. There are several misconceptions about RPA. RPA is not a humanoid robot. It does not have a physical form and no resemblance to humans. RPA cannot replace humans or replicate human cognitive functions, it does not have a brain of its own, and cannot perform logical or critical thinking as humans do. The working of RPA includes four crucial phases. 1. The planning phase typically involves gathering the processes to be automated, identifying the test objects, and finalizing the implementation approach. Two. The development phase includes the creation of automation workflows as per the agreed plan. 3. Deployment and testing is a vital phase, since it uncovers any unexpected outages and ensures a bug-free product. 4. Lastly, there's the support and maintenance phase, which ensures that the product is continuously updated with smooth deployment across the user base. To meet the objectives of RPA, tools are used. These RPA tools are software applications that can configure tasks and automate them. Some of the popular RPA tools in the market are UiPath, Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism, WorkFusion, Pega, and Redwood, among others. When it comes to quality, RPA ensures consistent, error-free output, leading to reduced operational risks. This, in turn, improves customer satisfaction. In the area of delivery, RPA can help decrease the average handling time, and this enhances the customer experience and ensures 24-7 business continuity. With respect to cost, according to NASCOM, 
Domestic businesses can reduce the cost by up to 65% through RPA. It offers a higher ROI by driving positive returns within quarters as opposed to years. Other advantages of RPA include reduced training costs, minimal utilization of IT resources, and easier software migration. Today, many domains and industries like banking and finance, IT integration processes, human resources, insurance agencies, marketing and sales, and customer relationship management readily deploy RPA. RPA service adoption has been showing tremendous growth since 2016 and will continue to increase beyond 2020. According to McKinsey's research, knowledge and work automation could have an economic impact of $5 to $7 trillion by the year 2025. It will impact more than 230 million knowledge workers, which constitute 9% of the global workforce. Any company which is labor-intensive, where people are performing high-volume, high-transaction functions, stand to benefit the most with RPA adoption, boosting their capabilities and saving money and time. Now that we've discussed what RPA is and isn't, here's a question for you. Which of the following is not an RPA use case? 1. Email query processing 2. Data extraction 3. Image recognition 4. Payroll processing Give it a thought and leave your answers in the comment section below. RPA offers the ability to automate business processes quickly and easily. It paves the way for digital transformation by placing automation tools at the user's disposal. So, what are you waiting for? Get certified and become an RPA developer to build a bright future in the field of automation. Now let's jump into the topic, 10 reasons why you should learn RPA. But before jumping into it, let me give you a brief insight into what exactly RPA is. Now, uh, do you remember the time you used the digital calculator in maybe your calculus class? it made it so much easier for you to arrive at an answer. Calculators undoubtedly helped you solve complex mathematical problems, which previously required a lot of time. And of course, doing manual calculations have inherently several errors. But does calculation account for automation? Well, no. A conventional calculator requires manual input. So this is partial automation. Automating the usage of a calculator that requires zero human intervention is what RPA does. So what exactly is RPA? Robotic process automation is the use of software with artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities to handle high volume repeated tasks that previously required humans. Now some of these tasks include addressing queries, making calculations, maintaining records, or even making transactions. So why is RPA gaining popularity so rapidly? And why do companies and techies have RPA perspectives? So here are the 10 reasons why one should learn RPA. So number 10, fast implementation. Now getting data entry bots up and running goes quickly. Implementing a new RPA software system certainly happens much faster than training a new person. You can have these data entry bots up and running in just days. In contrast, if you wanted to hire a new human employee, you'd be taking a lot of time in sorting out resumes, conducting interviews, going through the entire boring hiring process, and then finally when you find the right person, you'd have to spend time and energy on training them. However, in case of RPA, all of this is countered. And number nine, we have no training time. So now this is an important one. If your process changes and the bots need to learn something new, you can either replace them with new bots or alter their programming. Now that again goes much faster than training employees for new tasks. In terms of costs, training an employee for a new task will pan out to be way more expensive and time consuming. Next up, the bots will never quit. Now with RPA, you don't have to worry about employees quitting or dealing with the turnover. Bots don't care how hard they're working or how boring their job is or how repeatedly they're doing the same tasks. Again, yes, it would be ironic if the bots got tired. 
software bots can work all the time 24 hours a day every single day of the year at 100% capacity now rpa doesn't take holidays it doesn't have sick needs and of course they do not have unproductive days at all well isn't that a treat to have someone who never retires or decides it's time to move to a different job next up minimal it resources Maintaining software bots requires minimal IT resources. In some cases, it doesn't, IT doesn't need to get involved at all. Your RPA systems will be managed by the software provider. They're responsible for maintenance and updates, all of that. It completely takes the burden off IT and saves your company a whole lot of money. ROI is visible. Now, every organization wants to quantify their gains. Many of these organizations do not know how they should determine their ROI. But when it comes to adopting robotic process automation, ROI is visible. It defines a clearer path to demonstrate its returns. Complex problems can be solved. Now, as our data sources and analytical capabilities have grown, so has the time required to build various reports. Robotic process automation system is ideal to, for solution to solve these types of problems. The system stores the information and it can also remember and transform this information very easily. That means this makes you auditable and tax ready. Software migration. Now it's a fact that software migrations are time consuming and costly. Migrating to a new software could take months and cost could turn out to be tens or thousands of millions of dollars. What's even more frustrating is that at all times, certain features and functionalities which may have functioned in a particular way in a previous version may not even be present in the updated version. So RPA helps with data migration with accuracy, speed and continuous updating of software. RPA has a free tier. Many RPA vendors offer free tiers. Some of these vendors are Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere, UiPath, among others. These RPA software vendors are offering high RPA software, notably UiPath with their Community Edition and WorkFusion with their RPA Express. This helps lower the total cost of ownership. There's no rip and replace. Now, RPA doesn't jeopardize an employee's job, but helps with the growth of new jobs. To do your work, you need some additional software, yes, and virtual machines to deploy fully independent digital bots. But you may not need to rip and replace your existing infrastructures. Also, there's a common misconception that RPA could steal our jobs. Well, that's not true. Monitoring and controlling these bots are completely the responsibilities of the developer. As a result, RPA does not pull down your existing systems, but it leverages them. Lastly, popularity and high salary. According to Glassdoor, the average salary of an RPA developer in the US is 77,000 US dollars. And in India, the beginning salary for an RPA developer is around 4.65 lakhs per annum. Top tier companies like Dell, IBM, Accenture, Capgemini, Cognizant among others are readily hiring RPA developers. Now with that, Let's move on to the growth projections of RPA. Now, looking at the graph here, both RPA software and services increased by huge amounts during between 2016 and 2020. According to McKinsey Research, knowledge and work automation could have an economic impact of five to seven trillion dollars by the year 2025. It will touch more than 230 million knowledge workers, which, are, which constitute about 9% of the global workforce. Any company which is labor intensive, where people are performing high volume, high transaction functions, will boost their capabilities and save money and time with RPA. Now, this is all you need to know about why one should learn RPA. But if you're looking to become a developer, Let's look at some of the job roles and responsibilities. RPA developers are responsible for the creation, 
design, development, and implementation of RPA systems. An RPA developer is expected to provide guidance with process design, design, develop test automation workflows, deploy RPA components, be it bots, robots, or development tools, support the implementation of RPA solutions, create process documentation, and also assure the quality of the automation. So moving to the most exciting part, here is an easy question for you to answer. Which of the following is not an RPA use case? Option A, email query processing. B, data transfer between systems. C, payroll processing. Or D, image recognition. So make sure to leave your answers in the comment section or the chat section. All right then, moving on. So you must be wondering how Simply Learn can help you. Now, if you're looking to make a career as an RPA developer, then I'd recommend you go through some of the course, courses offered by us. So you could visit our official website. Say simplylearn.com and say RPA. You get a few options and depending on your requirement, you can take up the appropriate course. So we have RPA training using UiPath. All right, so you can click on that and get a brief overview of it. So this certification training is designed to help you master RPA processes and best practices. Now this mainly focuses on UiPath certification. It also gives you an insight into the key features you can opt for your required training options and then you have a course curriculum and then you have eligibility. So this training is ideal for anyone with a technical background and anybody who wants to kickstart a career in this field. So professionals can also benefit from this training and be it developers, project managers, architects or product managers. Next up, we have introduction to robotic process automation. Now, then again, you can look at the key features, what it provides. You have uh, different courses for individuals and businesses. You can go through the description. And if you think this suits your requirements, then you can opt this. And again, it gives you the course overview. If this is what you want to learn, then I think this course is for you. And lastly, we have Automation Anywhere Certified Advanced RPA Training Course. Now this is for Automation Anywhere Certification. So anybody looking for that should totally go for this. We again have the overview here, the key salient features. We have training options and then the criteria and course content. So you could go go ahead and look at this and then choose the appropriate one in this video we will be looking at the robotic process automation example let us consider a discussion between john and jamie john is very curious and wants to know how and where rpa is used in different fields jamie being a developer helps john in understanding the rpa examples even if you are curious to know the applications of rpa then you are at the right place so let's get started the first example is customer service. Let's look at the problem statement. A customer representative must understand and solve the customer queries, carry out the necessary actions by switching between the various softwares and applications and inform the customer. This must wait while the representative is busy dealing with data, sometimes asking for information that has already been requested. This tends to decrease customer satisfaction and extends call duration. The solution requires identifying frequently asked customer questions, assessing customer representative actions in response to those questions, and developing RPA solutions to facilitate those questions. When several sets of information need to be coordinated across systems, the customer service representative can launch a bot. The bot completes all actions in seconds with the press of a button. 
for frequently asked questions, a dashboard can be created. A customer service representative will fill out the necessary information to receive the queries, and bots will use that data in multiple systems to complete the transaction. Let's look at an example. Consider a scenario where a company was providing support to the client, and the company was supposed to handle a large number of calls, approximately 20,000 calls per month, which required a significant amount of time spent in the support team. Because of the system's complexity, an executive's average time was about 10 minutes, as the system was inefficient and slow, resulting in a poor customer service. With the RPA solution, the organization gained a virtual team that can complete the task in less than a minute, resulting in a drastic reduction in an execution time. The RPA bot performs the following task. Loading a comprehensive customer profile, obtaining a detailed billing information, user preferences and other user information are being updated, resolving common but simple customer issues. Let's look at the second example, financial service. Financial service involves compiling and combining financial information from various departments and storing the records in a system. Data is manually extracted from a bank statements to reconcile documents and link them to its forms using detailed spreadsheets. To complete the reports, business rely on Excel, legacy software and manual labor, which is tedious and time consuming. Solution Robots can generate invoices in seconds, prompting clients to pay more quickly. RPA in financial services tracks and standardizes and validates payments process orders and avoids errors and is always on top of things, such a disciplined assistant makes the customer's experience less stressful, adding value to the service provider. RPA in finance eliminates the need for endless email correspondence and ensures a smooth payment approval process, matches invoices to responsible parties and sets deadline reminders. Automated data entry speeds up the process and relieves human employees of huge tasks. This enables precise and structured invoice processing. Consider a financial service company that's having difficulty extracting data from financial documents efficiently and accurately in order to generate ratings. Using RPA, company implemented an application that recognized and processed data. This enabled the client to quickly and cost-effectively automate. The tasks performed by RPA bots in financial service are Investment management Reconciliation of bank statements Organizing the finances Record of accounts receivables and paid The third example is HR service. This operation includes numerous routine steps such as interview scheduling, record keeping, resume screening, candidate shortlisting, induction training and onboarding. Hiring and firing place a significant burden on HR and other support functions such as IT, security, and facilities management, particularly for medium and large businesses. While it is expensive to build a solution that encompasses all of these functions and completes the necessary task for new or departing employees, some employees can be sloppy with recording absences, vacation, or in general using the existing absence management system. So the possible solution for this is RPA can be used to collect and screen resumes and online application forms, conduct through background checks and compare the information to all the relevant job requisitions. This allows the best candidates to be shortlisted. RPA can be used quickly to create offer letters for new employees that are both personalized and accurate and also validate records by cross-checking data such as absentee reports against time logged in the corporate network and alerting when information is missing or in inconsistent. Talent acquisition team of a company automated aspects of onboarding process for new employees. Previously, the onboarding paperwork was completed manually by one person, consuming a significant amount of employees' time that could have been spent on more valuable work. This type of work that no one wants to do day after day. The company understands that an HR department wants to provide a digital and straightforward experience. The task required a lot of copy and paste activities. With the implementation of RPA, the bot completed the onboarding paperwork in less time, allowing HRs 
to spend more time on corporate social responsibilities, hiring talent, initiatives, and improving a company's reputation. The tasks performed by RPA bots in HR service are screening resumes, onboarding of new hires, attendance management, induction and training, employment management, and survey report. The fourth example is telecom service. The telecommunications industry involves high frequency of manual, repetitive, rules-based processes, all of which are critical for providing appropriate service delivery. Thus, the foundation of telecommunications is made up of processes that are highly amenable to automation. For telecommunication companies looking to improve their customer service, high reliability and accuracy of process outcomes are required. Solution The use of robotic process automation in telecom reduces error rates to close to zero, improves data quality, improves customer service, and increases operational efficiency, all while contributing significantly to cost reduction. RPA technology can capture the business process task performed by a telecom company's employees. Based on the employee's action, a well structured workflow can be generated which serves as the foundation for automated process. By mapping each process step with its significant cost for manual execution, it is simple to determine which action should be automated to maximize return on the investment. Consider an example, a telecommunications and media company decided to automate its order creation and service removal process to cut costs associated with the company speed booster discount service and deal with a massive amount of transactional data. With the implementation of RPA, it becomes simple to automate the order build process and service removal activity. The tasks performed by RPA bots in telecom service are It checks on the credit and SIM card swapping, the solution of customer complaints, porting customer phone numbers, responding to questions from partners. The fifth example is healthcare service. Healthcare systems contain numerous burdensome tasks that involve significant resource allocation such as claim management. This results in high operational cost and slow process. Every industry has inefficiencies, but few face the healthcare industry's challenges. Strict regulations regarding patient data and lack of resources to deal with such rules. Billing takes time after a healthcare service is provided due to manual and repetitive tasks in the management process. Management process include document and data input, processing, and evaluation in addition to the automating time-consuming tasks. Patients can schedule appointments without the intervention of hospital employees credit to RPA technology. Along with eliminating the need of resource allocation for scheduling, by allowing patients to reschedule appointments more quickly, this application can improve customer relations. RPA allows healthcare providers to track and document each process step in structured log files to comply with external audits. RPA improves data confidentiality because bots handle this process. Let's consider an example. Daily, a healthcare organization deals with the process of patient transaction data, customer detail recording, claims to the process, and data reconciliation for healthcare schemes are some of the manual process they must streamline daily. The primary goal was to increase the efficiency of existing approaches to achieve greater accuracy with reduced turnaround time. Robotic process automation was implemented and the most significant possible impact was obtained. RPA platform handled claims, processing, and health data reconciliation program. Healthcare was able to reduce turnaround time with this solution. The tasks performed by RPA bots in healthcare service are appointment scheduling, regulatory compliance, data entry, and supporting analytics to improve treatment. In this video, we will learn about installation of Automation Anywhere Community Edition. Prerequisite Enterprise Control Room requires a server level machine to be installed. The server can be a physical machine in your data center or a cloud platform instance. Cloud platforms like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, and Microsoft Azure. The device should have a processor of 8 core Intel. Xeon processor. It should have storage disk space of at least 500 GB and network of 1 gigabit Ethernet. 
it is recommended that you configure the enterprise control room network bandwidth to be greater than 1 gigabyte ethernet because uplink traffic can quickly exceed 1 gigabit ethernet depending on the complexity of the automation run. Operating system Automation Anywhere is compatible with the operating systems such as Windows 10, Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2016 and Windows Server 2019. Automation Anywhere supports both 32-bit and 64-bit operating system versions. Finally, the system should have a RAM of 16 GB. Let's look at the features of the Community Edition. Students and developers can use the Automation 360 Cloud Platform for free with the Community Edition. It is completely web-based. You can build a RPA bot in the cloud from any device thanks to a completely web-based experience that requires no download. Utilize the cloud to gain access to cutting-edge enterprise class technology. The most recent enterprise class technology. Community Edition will allow you to stay up to date with the latest version of our enterprise platform. AI drag and drop. With direct IQ bot integration, you can automate your document centric process. Drag and drop simplicity with instance on ease of use. Create bots at any skill level. Create bots using no code, low code, or bring your own code options. Begin by using free bots. Use pre built bots for personal productivity, business continuity, and other purposes. Let's look at the installation of Community Edition. Let's go to the browser. Go to the Automation Anywhere official website, automationanywhere.com. After going to the website, scroll down. Here you can see Community Edition. Click on Community Edition. To download the Community Edition free, fill out the form, fill all the necessary details and click on Get Free Community Edition. Once you fill in all the details and click on Get Free Community Edition, you will receive an email. So you will receive an email. The email consists of a control room URL, a username and password. So open this control room URL. Once you click on the control room link, a username password, a login page appears where you need to enter the username and password. So enter the username and password which you have received in the mail and login. Unlike other editions, in community edition there will be no client option. You can develop the bots on the cloud. Let us build our first bot. Let us go to the control room. So we'll build our first bot. So the first step under the robotic process automation, click on create a bot. So enter the name, say first bot. Enter the name and click on create and edit. So you can see the first bot is successfully created. Now search for the message box here. Double click on the message box to add it in the workflow. So enter the message here, enter the message which you want to be displayed. So let us enter say, hello, how are you? So we have entered this message. After entering the message, click on save button. And after saving, click on run. It's downloading the dependencies. Here you can see the message is being displayed. Hello, how are you? When, when you do it for the first time, when you click on the run button, a pop-up will appear to connect to my computer. Then a file will get downloaded. The file is to install a bot agent. The bot will get connected to the control room. Then there will be an option to enable extension to the Chrome. After doing all that, finally, th finally the bot is ready to display the message. So here you can see. The message is being displayed. In this session, we will learn about Automation Anywhere tutorial. What is Automation Anywhere? Automation Anywhere is a well-known robotic process automation tool that enables business to automate end-to-end -end business operations. Automation Anywhere provides powerful 
and user-friendly RPA capabilities such as cloud-native, web-based intelligent automation solution for automating any complex task. It is a web-based management system that employs a control room to execute automated tasks. It improves the efficiency of business process and reduces the need for human labor. Features of Automation Anywhere Automation Anywhere offers an easy-to-use interface for building bots and designing business process automation workflows. It supports multiple operating systems such as Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. It consists of a recorder that works on a variety of platforms including Microsoft Windows, Citrix, Web, and SAP. It consists of different bot views for collaboration, flow view for business users, list view for developers, and dual view for collaboration. Automation Anywhere supports platforms like JavaScript, Python, and VBScript, as well as advanced variable capabilities. Another key feature is its versatile architecture that allows for the addition of new command packages. Let's look at the Automation Anywhere components. The first component is Automation Anywhere Robotic Interface, AARI. It is a user-friendly interface that allows business users to collaborate with bots. Users can initiate process automation, provide feedback to the bots in order for process to be resumed, and escalate requests to additional users for downstream processing. AARI, that is Automation Anywhere Robotic Interface, enables enterprises to unlock previously unavailable automation opportunities between humans and the bots. IQBot, an intelligent document processing solution capable of reading and processing a wide range of complex documents and emails. IQBot intelligently captures, classifies and extracts semi-structured and unstructured data using RPA and multiple AI techniques, allowing document-centric business process to be automated end-to-end. Bot Insight the analytics platform that delivers real-time, interactive and intelligent insights into business process and operational intelligence. Bot Insight takes the large amount of content level and productivity data generated by deployed bots and converts it into insights via automatically generated and customizable dashboards. Discovery Bot an intelligent business solution for enterprise business that enables end users to discover automation opportunities through process discovery. Discovery Bot focuses on process automation by capturing document process, identifying opportunities from business-centric process, and prioritizing opportunities based on ROI and create bots automatically. Discovery Bot collaborates with business workers to identify automation opportunities that can maximize the return on your RPA investment. Let's look at the architecture of Automation Anywhere. Automation Anywhere platform is built using a distributed architecture. The Enterprise Control Room, a web-based platform, that manages the development and execution of digital workforce provides centralized management. Bot creators and bot runners are linked to the enterprise control room. Bot creators are software development platforms for authorizing and customizing automations. Bot runners are runtime systems deployed on the machine that carry out the automations. Bot runners can be installed on desktops, in data centers, or in the cloud. Let's explore the architecture in detail. Bot Creators A bot is a self-contained task that requires little to no human intervention to complete. The bot creator is a customized development client for automation anywhere that is used to create bots. Task Editor, Event Watcher, Bot Player, Auto Login, and Local Scheduler are all included. The bot creator also includes the ability to create bots from a device utilizing the enterprise client application. 
The device is registered with the enterprise control room after the bot creator user signs in for the first time and the user can deploy bots on that device. Bot Runners A bot runner has the ability to run bots from a device utilizing the enterprise client application. The device is registered with the enterprise control room after the bot runner users log in for the first time and the user can deploy bots on that device. Bots are run by the bot runner which is a software machine. Bot runners can run bots at scale after they have been developed with bot create. Control room. The enterprise control room serves as a single point of management for all bots. Enterprise control room is placed on a server in the data center and configured to work with the other data center components. A river proxy is in charge of listening for requests for remote connections and sending them to the appropriate specialized service. Using a collection of specialized web service, the enterprise control room manages, schedules, executes and configures various bots and bot runner capabilities. Let's look at the types of bots in Automation Anywhere. Task bot. Task bots are used for automating repetitive tasks based on the rules. These tasks are simple to create and can reliably complete multi-step procedures. Document administration, claims management, HR departments, IT and other areas benefit from task bots. They increase production reduce errors and save money. Metabot Metabots are more advanced version of task bots. Metabots are automation building components that help with next generation integration scalability. These are intended for scalable, complex process. On a computer, Metabots are used to automate applications, application APIs, visual captures, and integration flow can all be used to develop metabots. IQBot IQBots are the next generation of intelligent bots. With the ability to think like humans, these bots are designed to learn on their own and carry out tasks in accordance with that learning. Users can experience the potential of automation with IQBots, which use advanced cognitive technology and advanced artificial technologies these bots have capabilities such as self-learning, decision-making, and subject matter expertise, among others. Data can be extracted from semi-structured and unstructured data by these bots. IQ bots also learn to recognize patterns so that the bot knows exactly what to do the next time the pattern appears. IQ bots also learn to recognize patterns so that the bot knows exactly what to do the next time the pattern appears. With each human confirmation, it learns and improves its ability to carry out the act. Benefits of using automation anywhere. Time saving. An easy to use interface that allows users of varying skill levels to easily use the product and accelerate the learning process. With instant web-based deployment, you can get started with writing bots right away. Business Adaptability Automation Anywhere provides regular updates ensuring that you are always up to date on any device anywhere. It provides continuity of operations with high availability and disaster recovery. Low Cost of Ownership there is no need for additional infrastructure investment. It gives low cost maintenance. A unified platform for front office, back office and employee applications is provided. Let's look at the demo. So let's see a demo. In this demo, we will create a bot which will automatically log in inside the Simply Learn login page. So I'll show you. Let's go to the browser. I'll go to the Simply Learns page. So, this is the Simply Learns login page. So, in this page, the bot will automatically enter the email address, password, and it will click on the login button.
and it will take you inside the simply learns page so we'll create a bot so i'll show you how the bot works so i have created it let's see the output first and then we'll get started with the project so i'll click on the run button it will download all the dependencies here you can see it's entering the email address it's entering the password and it will click on the login button so this is the project this is the output so you have seen the output so let's get started we'll close this go to the go to the mail which you received from the automation anywhere and click on the control room link and you will open up here after coming here click on a create a bot so enter a name let's say we'll enter as login bot since we are creating a project to login if you want you can give the description and next click on create and edit there are three options here flow list and dual in the flow it only shows the flow chart of what activities or actions you are dragging and dropping it in the list it shows the in the form of the list all the actions and in the dual it shows the flow chart as well as the actions what actions it is performing so first we need the browser option so we'll search for the browser action so this is the browser action so the browser package contains actions that enable you to download file find broken lines and launch a website so this package basically supports internet explorer microsoft edge and google chrome browsers so the browser package includes the actions like close download file get source code find broken lines go back open run javascript now for us to open the browser to open the simply learns website we need the open option so let's click on the open double click on the open so what open does is opens the browser to a specific web page whichever web page link we provides it opens that browser so what we want to open do we want to open it in the existing tab or a new tab or a new window so in existing tab it opens the web page in the currently open tab so this existing tab option is only available in the google chrome browser and new tab opens the web page in a new tab like select the tab from the list of the active tabs in the google chrome browser or insert a new window variable and in the new window this opens the web page in a new window or a, of a specific browser whichever browser you choose it opens the web page in a new window so all these options are applicable in the google chrome browser so we will select the new window option and the browser you can you have these options internet explorer mozilla firefox chrome and microsoft edge so we will select google chrome and we will select the link to open so we should select the link so we'll go to the simply learns website page so this is the page we are logging in so that is why we need the link of this page so copy the link of this page and paste the link here and we need it in the new window so save it and let's run and see if this opens in the new window let's click on run
okay so till now we are going right so we have entered the link and we have run the bot and the bot is opening the web page in the new window so we'll close this so after this we need the recorder package so search for the recorder package so this is the recorder package in this we have the capture action so the capture action from the recorder package is used to capture an interaction with the user interface object such as a text box button table menu radio button combo box checkbox list view link tree and package tab the capture action enables you to add single interaction when building your bot so let's double click on capture option So let's select dual so that we can see what action it triggers. So after selecting the capture option, so, so select the browser option, browser window, then click on this refresh windows. So it will show a list of, uh, so it will show the list of pages that are open in the browser. So scroll down and we need learning on simply learn. so this is the web page in which we are logging in so select the web page go down and let's click on capture object click on capture object so first we need to fill in the email address so you can see here it's showing a red color box so click on email address so it will capture this object of email address where you can see recording capture finalization so the object is captured scroll down and here you can see action to take on object what action should be taken on the object which we have selected so we need to enter the text that is the email address so select set text and scroll down and enter what text you want to enter there so i'll enter my email id now scroll down you can enter the time how much ever you want uh, it is recommended to enter a uh, nine seconds or ten seconds but it's optional so we'll skip it for now you can see here it's the of the type user login page so we have captured the first object that is email address so we'll save it and we'll run and see if it's entering the email address here you can see it's open the web page in the new window and it has entered the email address so let's go back to the control room we'll close this so your bot has run successfully so now that we have uh, entered the email address we need to enter the password so we will use another capture action In this we'll, se we'll select the same browser window then we'll select the same learning on simply learn website and we'll click on capture object but now this time we'll capture the object password select the password object and recording capture finalization So now that the object is captured, we need to select the action, what action should be performed. So we will select set text. Now that we have selected text, since we are entering the password, the password should be credential. And when the password is credential, you can't enter the password here. You need to pick the password. You need to pick the password from the locker room. So now that now that I have already created a credential and uh, entered in the locker room, for me it's showing here. I'll show you how to create a credential and create a locker room. 
So we will save it till here for now. We will save here. Uh, let's go to the credential section. Here if you go in the manage options, you can see credentials. So go in the credentials. This is the credentials which I have already created. Go to the create credential options. Click on it. So enter the credential name. Say I'll enter it as username. Enter the description if you want any. And scroll down. And enter the attribute name. What attribute are you entering? For first we will enter the email address. So select email address. And select the input type as standard description is optional and enter the value what is the email address so i'll enter my email address scroll down and click on the plus here to add so there are two attributes in the login page right that is the email address and password so one attribute we have entered the email address and the other attribute is the password attribute so select password and input type as standard and since we are entering the password it should be masked so that no one could see your password the password should be encrypted so enter your password here after entering the password so you have created the you have filled all the credential details click on create credential so after clicking on create credential your credential will be created so that is how you create a credential after creating the credential so since i have already created the credential i will click on cancel if you're creating if you want to create the credential enter all these details and click on the create credential so i'll click on cancel so this is once you create the credential you can see uh, like this a credential whatever you have created it will be shown here so this is how you create a credential now after creating the credential you need to go to the locker section and here you can see create a locker click on create a locker so enter the locker room whatever you want so let us enter username after entering the locker room go to the credential and select the credential whatever you have created since i have already entered the credential in the locker that is why it is uh, that is why this is disabled for me so when you are entering the credential in the locker room for the first time you can come inside the locker and select this option check this option and click on this so this will get this will get deposited in the locker this owners and managers section is disabled the community edition so we can't do any changes in that this will also be disabled this will also be disabled go to the consumers so enable this enable this click on the community edition user and get deposit this in the locker click on this then scroll down so this is the last then when you go back scroll up so when you finish doing all this this uh, create locker option will get enabled so when this option get enabled click on create locker and your locker will be created that's how you create a locker since i have already created a locker i did not uh, so these options are not enabled for me so yeah, this option is also not enabled when you do all these steps this option gets enabled that is how you create a locker I hope you have understood how to create a credential and how to create a locker. So let's go back to the bot which we had created. Let's go to the automation. So the bot which we had created was a login bot. So we had selected the recorder op option. In this recorder we had selected the action password. So we need to enter the password. So 
select here go to here click on pick and select the locker which we had created the email address select the credential that is the email address credential select the attribute attribute is the password attribute we had entered two attributes right one is the email address and the password so we are entering the password here select the password attribute and click on confirm scroll down here you can see we have picked the password if you want you can enter the time which is optional you can see it is of the type user password so that's all save it now we need a one more recorder action that is to click on the login button so we'll select for the search for the recorder select the capture option and we'll select the browser select the web page and click on the capture object so the object which we are capturing now is the login button so click on the login button here you can see recording capture finalization So the login button is being captured. So what action should be taken? So we need to click on the login button. Here you can see if you have noticed there is no option to set text. Why? Because this is a login button and we can't enter the text here. So that option is not here. So from this options we should select the click option to login. So we'll select the click option. And you can see here uh, it is of the type login button login so we have selected the login button now we'll save it so we have completed the project in the first step we have selected the browser package in browser package we have selected the open action which opens the web page the link which we have provided it opens the web page in the second we have selected from the recorder package we have selected the capture option in which we have captured the email address then we have captured the password and then we have captured to click on the login button so let's save it we have saved it so let's click on run and see Here you can see the web page has opened in the new window. Email address has been entered. Password has been entered. And it is clicking on the login page. And it is redirecting to the website. And here you can see the login, but login page has been opened. So your bot has run successfully. In this video, we will learn about Automation Anywhere Excel operations, Excel Packages. The Excel package consists of actions that allow us to automate many of the tedious tasks while working with Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. The Excel packages that Automation Anywhere offers are Excel Advanced Package. To use the Excel Advanced Package command, we must first install the Excel Advanced Package. It's utilized to automate actions involving the workbook, worksheet, rows, columns, and cells. The system must have Microsoft Office installed. The versions of Microsoft Office that are supported range from Microsoft Office 2016 to 2019. File formats like .xls, .xlsx are supported by this command. And it also supports the older Excel formats as well as the advanced Excel actions. And it requires the installation of the Microsoft Excel application. Next we have Excel Basic Package. This package enables quick spreadsheet activities for .xlsx files without requiring the MS Excel software to be installed. Office 365 Excel. This package provides commands for working with Excel online. The Office 365 Excel bundle includes actions 
that allow you to automate operations in Microsoft Excel online. If you are using Microsoft Excel 365 via a web browser, you can use the Office 365 Excel package to automate Excel process. Let's look at the Excel commands. Some of the Excel commands are Open Spreadsheet. This allows to open the Excel spreadsheet. Close Spreadsheet. Closes a spreadsheet that was opened using the Open Spreadsheet operation. The Excel command identifies the spreadsheet using the same session name as one used in the Open Spreadsheet operation. Save Spreadsheet. This command saves a spreadsheet in an open workbook. Activate Spreadsheet. Activates a specific spreadsheet in an open workbook. It specifies whether to activate the sheet by index or sheet by name. Get cell. This command allows to retrieve the values of a specific cell as well as the range of the cell. Set cell. This command sets the value of the active cell or a specific cell in an Excel spreadsheet. You can assign a variable to the cell value. Go to cell. Moves to a specific cell within a spreadsheet. It can move one cell to the left or to the right of the active cell. And it can move one cell above or below the active cell or move to the beginning or end of the column. Delete cell. This command deletes the value in an active cell or in a specific cell within an Excel spreadsheet. Run Excel macro. Runs a macro that is stored within an Excel spreadsheet. Enter the macro name and specify the parameters of the macro arguments. Let's look at the demo. In this demo, we will have two Excel files and we will use Excel operations and merge these two Excel files. So, let's jump into Automation Anywhere. So what we are doing is we have two Excel files. I'll show you the files. So this is a Excel file one, which has a, which has a data table of employees and salaries. And we have another file, Excel file two, which has the data table of employee names and salaries. So the file one has different names, employee names and different salaries, and the file two has different names and different salaries. So we will combine both of these data table. We'll create a bot which will combine both of this data table. So let's go to the control room. Go to the automation section and click on create new bot. Name the bot. We'll name it as Excel bot. Click on create and edit. So after creating a bot, go to search actions and search for a step. Step action and double click on this. So what step action does is it runs a sequence of commands. For example, to open a file 1 and file 2, there, are, there is a sequence of steps. And at the end of this project, there will be many list of steps, so which will be confusing. So just to avoid confusion, we will drag and drop the step and inside each step there will be a number of actions. So we have, now that we have selected this action step, give the title, uh, we'll name it as file1. So go to Excel package, search for Excel. So in Excel advanced, since I have MS Excel installed in my PC, so I will use Excel Advance. Scroll down and select Open. Open action opens an Excel spreadsheet. This action works with Excel SX and Excel S and all these files which you can see here. So now after dragging and dropping open option, you can select the file path from control room, desktop file or a variable. I have the file on my desktop, so I'll select desktop and I'll browse. So I'll select the file, that is file 1 and I'll open. So I have selected the file and our file contains the headers. So check this box and check this specific sheet name so that you can name the sheet. So our data table is in the sheet 1. So type the name of the sheet and open in read write mode or read only mode. So we will open in read write mode. And if you scroll down, there is session name. 
so we'll keep it as default so this much is done next activity so this action should be inside the step action so drag and drop it inside okay next we need get multiple cells double click on get multiple cells get multiple cells retrieves the values of multiple cells in an excel worksheet so you can select range of cells to be returned all rows or specific rows or cell range we, we will select all rows since we want to merge all the rows so select all rows and select the read visible text in cell or read cell value you can select any one of this and the session name keep it as default and you need to assign value to the variable so we will create a variable since we are using the data table we will name it as table 1 ok let's create and select so we have selected the variable and now we need to close the file so we will select the close action so the close action closes an excel spreadsheet so double click and select the close option here you can you should uncheck the save changes when closing the file and name the session as default okay so step one that is file one so this three steps so this is done for file one now we need to repeat this for file two as well so we'll save here till now what we have done okay now we'll repeat this for file two let's drag and drop step action so in step two name it as file 2 we are performing this step for file 2 ok now we will go to excel package and select open we need to open the file so basically we are repeating this above steps and we will select the file 2 we will go to desktop file browse and select file 2 so we have selected the file 2 and this file also contains headers check this box and specify the sheet name as sheet 1 we have the data table in sheet 1 so sheet 1 and read and write mode and session name since the session name for the file 1 is default and we need to change here so we'll give it as default 2 as the session name okay so this much is done now we next we need get multiple cells so double click on get multiple cells we'll select all rows and set, change the session name to default 2 and create a variable here so right click and create a variable name it as table 2 and create and select ok this is done next we need to close the file so scroll up and select the close action and change the session name for file 2 we have kept the session name as default 2 so we will use the same session ok so this much is done we will save ok now file 1 and file 2 is created so this actions are outside the file 2 outside the step file 2 so we will bring it inside these are supposed to be inside okay now step one and step two is done next we need to merge this file so go to the data table package so in this data table package you can see all these actions we need the merge action this merges two data table together in a single data table so double click on merge data table okay so after double clicking on merge data table enter the first table name so the enter the data table name we'll select it as table 1 what we had created in step 1 file 1 and similarly we'll enter the second data table name so these are basically the two data tables which we, which we want to merge right then enter the name of the data table in which we want to merge so we want to merge it in a either we can merge it in the file 1 or file 2 but we will create a new file and merge it in the new file so we will create a new variable here and we will name it as table 3 ok so create and select 
so new data table is created to create a new file to write it in a new file there is an action here write to file this writes a data table into a specified file so select this and choose a variable that is table 3 variable and enter the file so to enter the file name select the file path where you want to create this file so i'll select the file path of my desktop and from the desktop uh, i want to create a file as name result file result.csv so i've created this file so to create this file you need to check this box create folders and file if it doesn't exist so this file doesn't exist i've just named it here now well i check this box so this file will get created and check this overwrite existing file so that when you run it for a second time or third time the data doesn't overlap so every time you run it a new data has been overwritten so check this box and you can change this if you want row delimiter to new line or column delimiter comma and all this okay so this is done let's save and let's run It is downloading the dependencies. It will take a few seconds or sometimes a few minutes. Let's wait. So your bot has run successfully. We will go to the desktop and check the file which we created. Here you can see the result file is created. So we will open this result file. So here you can see the result file where both the tables have been merged. So from the row 2 team till the row 7, this was in the file 1 and this last 5 rows were in the file 2. So you can see here both the data tables have been merged. Now you can see here there that there are rows repeated. This row John is repeated twice. So we don't want the rows to be repeated. We want to eliminate the rows which are repeated. So for that, let's go here. So let's close this. And to remove the duplicate rows, we have an option here called remove duplicate rows. Remove duplicate rows removes the duplicate rows from our data table. Double click on remove duplicate rows and take it above right file. Okay, so in remove duplicate rows, select the data table name. We want to remove duplicate rows from table 3, which is the merged data table. So select the table 3 variable and now let's save it and let's run. Okay, your bot has run successfully. Now we'll go and check if the duplicate rows have been removed. Let's close this and go to the desktop, open the result file. And here you can see there are no duplicate rows. So there was an another duplicate row here named John and that row has been removed. And there are no duplicate rows left. That is how you remove the duplicate rows. Now let's see now we want this salaries to be sorted. We want this in order the employee with the highest salary we need him at the top and the employee with the lowest salary we need him at the bottom so let's go to the control room to sort the data there is an action called sort this sort action sorts a data table on the basis of column by ascending or descending order so double click on this double click on sort and drag and drop the sort action bring it above right file so in sort data table enter the data table name we'll enter the table 3 which is the merge data table and we can sort by column name or column index we'll sort it by name and what is the column name which we are sorting it is the salaries column right so let's type the column name salaries make sure the spelling is right otherwise it will show an error next we need to select the order in which we want to sort 
will select the descending order because you want the employee with the higher salary at the top. So select the descending order and let's save and let's click on run. Oops, there was an error. Maybe the error is because I have kept the Excel sheet open. So I'll close the Excel sheet and run again. So here we go. Your bot has run successfully. Let's go and check if the data is sorted. Let's click on the results. And here you can see the data has been sorted in the descending order. The employee with the highest salary is at the top and it's decreasing in the order and the employee with the lowest salary is at the bottom. So we have performed this operation of sorting data. Let's go back to the control room. Let's close this. There are similar other actions in the data table. There is assign or there is assign action. So assign action assigns the value of the source table variable to the destination table variable. The change column type where you can change the type of the column. If it's an integer, you can change it to string. And if it's in string, you want to change it to integer, then you can use this action. There is clear content. There is clear content action. Clears all the content of specified data table and get the number of rows. You can get the number of rows in this, get the number of rows action. And you can delete any column if you want. You can delete row, insert column, insert row. We, I have shown a few actions here. You can check out all of these actions. And if you have any doubt regarding any of these actions, you can comment in the comment section and I'll try to answer. So you can delete column, delete row, insert column or insert row. Similarly, you can join, join two data tables together as per the column specified, as per inner joint, outer joint, full joint. However you want, you can join the data tables and the merge action. We have merged two, two data tables here and you can remove the duplicate rows, get the number of rows, search for value, but search for any particular value if you want and search and you can set the value of a single cell and you can sort the data in ascending or descending order and write to the file. So you can write the data to file. So these are the actions present in the data table. If you are planning to attend an interview for an RPA or Automation Anywhere developer role, here is a comprehensive list of most frequently asked Automation Anywhere interview questions with answers. We'll first look at the beginner level questions. What is Automation Anywhere? Automation Anywhere is well known robotic process automation tool that enables business to automate end-to-end -end business operations. It provides powerful and user-friendly RPA capabilities such as cloud-native, web-based intelligent automation solution for automating any complex task. It is a web-based management system that employs a control room to execute automated tasks. It improves the efficiency of business process and reduces the need for human labor. What are the features of Automation Anywhere? Automation Anywhere offers an easy-to-use interface for building bots and designing business process automation workflows. It supports multiple operating systems such as Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. It consists of a recorder that works on a variety of platforms, including Microsoft Windows, Citrix, Web, and SAP. It consists of different bot views for collaboration, flow view for business users, list view for developers, and dual view for collaboration. Automation Anywhere supports platforms like JavaScript, Python, and VBScript, as well as advanced variable capabilities. Another key feature is its versatile architecture that allows for the addition of new command packages. What are the different components in Automation Anywhere? Automation Anywhere Robotic Interface AARI, is a user-friendly interface that allows business users to collaborate with bots. AARI enables enterprises to unlock previously unavailable automation opportunities between humans and bots that RPA could not address. IQBot, an intelligent document processing solution capable of reading and processing a wide range of complex documents and emails. IQBot intelligently captures, classifies, 
and extract semi-structured and unstructured data using RPA and multiple AI techniques, allowing document-centric business process to be automated end-to-end. Bot Insight The analytics platform that delivers real-time interactive and intelligent insights into the business process and operational intelligence. Discovery Bot an intelligent business solution for enterprise business that enables end users to discover automation opportunities through process discovery. Discovery Bot collaborates with business workers to identify automation opportunities that can maximize the return on your RPA investment. What is an enterprise control room and how does it work? The enterprise control room serves as a single point of management for all bots. The enterprise control room manages schedules, executes and configures various bots and bot runner capabilities using a collection of specialized web services. The enterprise control room is placed on a server in the data center and configured to work with the other data center components. Explain the different type of bots in automation anywhere. Taskbot. Taskbots are used for automating repetitive tasks based on the rules. These tasks are simple to create and can reliably complete multi-step procedures. Document administration, claims management, HR departments, IT and other areas benefit from task bots. Metabot Metabots are more advanced version of task bots. Metabots are automation building components that help with next generation integration scalability. These are intended for a scalable complex process. On a computer, metabots are used to automate applications. IQbot IQbots are the next generation of intelligent bots. With the ability to think like humans, these bots are designed to learn on their own and carry out tasks in accordance with that learning. IQbots also learn to recognize patterns so that the bot knows exactly what to do the next time the pattern appears. With each human confirmation, it learns and improves its ability to carry out the act. Explain briefly the architecture of Automation Anywhere. Automation Anywhere platform is built using a distributed architecture. The Enterprise Control Room is a web-based platform that manages the development and execution of digital workforce and provides a centralized management. Bot creators and bot runners are linked to the Enterprise Control Room. Bot creators are software development platforms for authorizing and customizing automations. Bot runners are runtime system deployed on machines that carry out the automations. Bot runners can be installed on desktops, in data centers or in the cloud. What is a bot creator? A bot is a self-contained task that requires little to no human intervention to complete. The bot creator is a customized development client for automation anywhere that is used to create bots. Task editor, event watcher, bot player, auto login and local scheduler are all included. The bot creator also includes the ability to create bots from a device utilizing the enterprise client application. The device is registered with the enterprise control room after the bot creator user signs in for the first time and the user can deploy bots on that device. What is a bot runner? A bot runner has ability to run bots from a device utilizing the enterprise client application. The device is registered with the enterprise control room after the bot runner user logs in for the first time and the user can deploy bots on that device. Bots are run by bot runner which is a software machine. Bot runners can run bots at a scale after they have been developed by the bot creator. Explain triggers in automation anywhere. Triggers integrate predefined events into your process reducing the amount of tasks that users must do repeatedly. In Automation Anywhere, you can use Attendant Automation to create unique triggers for numerous apps. These triggers can then be used to launch a bot. Add triggers to have the bot execute automatically whenever a specified event occurs. For instance, pressing a specific key or series of keystrokes. Explain the benefits of Automation Anywhere. Time saving. An easy to use interface that allows users of varying skill levels to easily use the product and accelerate the learning process. With instant web based deployment, you can get started with writing bots right away. Business adaptability Automation Anywhere provides regular updates 
ensuring that you are always up to date on any device anywhere. It provides continuity of operations with high availability and disaster recovery. Low cost of ownership. There is no need for additional infrastructure investment. A unified platform for front office, back office and employee applications. It gives lower maintenance cost. What are bot insights? The analytics platform that delivers real-time, interactive and intelligent insights into business process and operational intelligence. Bot Insight takes a large amount of content level and productivity data generated by deployed bots and converts it into insights via automatically generated and customizable dashboards. What are the different Excel packages that Automation Anywhere offers? Automation Anywhere offers three different Excel packages. Excel Advanced Package It's utilized to automate actions involving the workbook, worksheet, rows, columns, and cells. The system must have Microsoft Office installed. The versions of Microsoft Office that are supported range from 2016 to Microsoft Office 2019. Excel Basic Package Enables quick spreadsheet activities for .xlsx files without requiring the MS Excel software to be installed. Office 365 Excel It provides commands for working with Excel online. The Office 365 Excel bundle includes actions that allow you to automate operations in Microsoft Excel online. If you are using Microsoft Excel 365 via a web browser, you can use the Office 365 Excel package to automate Excel process. Let us look at the intermediate level questions. Explain functions of the following Excel commands. Open spreadsheet allows to open the Excel spreadsheet. Close spreadsheet closes a spreadsheet that was opened. Save spreadsheet saves a spreadsheet in an open workbook. Activate spreadsheet activates a specific spreadsheet in an open workbook. It specifies whether to activate the sheet by index or sheet by name. Get cell allows to retrieve the values of a specific cell as well as the range of the cell. Set cell sets the value of the active cell or a specific cell in an Excel spreadsheet. You can assign a variable to the cell value. Go to cell moves to a specific cell within a spreadsheet. Delete cell deletes the value of a specific cell within an Excel spreadsheet. Run Excel macro runs a macro that is stored within an Excel spreadsheet. Enter the macro name and specify the parameters of the macro arguments. Explain the types of triggers to start a bot. Email In email trigger, a bot is launched when a new email message arrives in the given email service, such as Microsoft Outlook, email server or AWS server. File and folder When a predefined file or folder event occurs, it starts a bot. As the trigger, you can choose from the following options like when you make a new file or a folder, or when a file or a folder that already exists gets destroyed, or when you rename a file or a folder. The next type is hotkey. When a predetermined combination of keystrokes is performed on the keyboard, a bot is launched. As the trigger, you can use any combination like Ctrl, Alt, Windows, and Escape are all control keys. Regular alphabetical characters are used in the key. Interface. When a predetermined event occurs on the selected user interface element, a bot is launched. Some instances of pre-configured events are a button is pressed by the user, or an application is opened or closed by the user, a checkbox is selected or cleared by the user. How to record the task with Universal Recorder? Step 1. Create a new bot or open an existing bot. Then click on the Start Recording and select Universal Recording. Step 3. Perform the required steps and click on Finish. Step 4. Edit the actions and click on Save. Let's jump into the Automation Anywhere control room and see how to record the task with Universal Recorder. So here we are in the control room. We have created a new bot. So let's search for a message box. Double click on the message box. Enter a message.
close message box after 5 seconds. Now go to start recording or you can press Ctrl plus R. Click on start recording and select the window which you want to record. So I'll select the calculator and click on universal recorder. And now you can perform actions. So I'm adding the numbers. So I have randomly performed some actions. Now I'll click on finish and let's finish the recording. Now let us save and click on run. So here you can see the message is displayed hello. It will close in 5 seconds and it has closed and the recording is been played and it shows the actions which we have recorded. You can see your bot has run successfully. How to clone a bot in automation anywhere? Create a read only duplicate of the bot in the private workspace from the public workspace so you can have a local copy without checking it out. Step 1. Log into the control room as a bot creator user and then in public space click bots the my bot page is displayed with the list of folders or files containing the bot then select the bot you want to clone click the actions menu and click clone task bot the clone bot appears in the same folder structure in the private workspace so let's jump into the automation in your control room and see how to clone a bot so this is the my bot folder so these are the bots which I have created. So let's go to this python bot, select this bot and go to the options and click here copy task bot and here you can see a copy of that bot is been created and name the bot whatever you want. So I'll keep the default name python bot copy one and click on copy. You can select the folder where you want to store it. I have kept the default folders. And here you can see python bot copy1 has been successfully created. So that is how you clone a bot. Explain the following commands. Delay command, wait command and task command. The delay command is used to delay the execution of next command for a set length of time. You have the option of specifying the time in milliseconds or seconds. Wait command. The wait command is used to add a condition that forces the next set of actions to wait for the contents of a screen to change before proceeding. Task command. Task command is used to start a task within a task or pause it and stop it. Explain predefined variables in automation anywhere. Predefined variables are variables that provide specific information about the machine on which the bot is run. The values of a preset variable cannot be changed by users. Below are the examples of predefined variables. Clipboard, date and time, string and system settings and parameters. Explain the date time predefined variables in automation anywhere. Using the date time packages activities you can manipulate date and time variables. Date returns a date that includes the hours, minutes and seconds. Day, the day is written in date format. R is a function that returns the hours in hours format. Machine, the device name is returned as a string by the machine. Millisecond, millisecond returns a value between 0 and 999 milliseconds. Minute, the minutes are returned in minute format. Month. Month is a function that returns the month in month format. Seconds. The seconds are returned in seconds format. Year. Returns the current year in the year format. How are loops used to control a bot in automation anywhere? 
Loops are one of the most powerful board building constructions. Loops are the instructions that repeat a set of actions a certain number of times or until a condition is met. When a loop checks for the completion of a defined number of iterations or satisfaction of a condition, if not satisfied, the loop is executed. The same conditions are checked repeatedly until the condition has been satisfied. If the condition is satisfied, then the loop is not being executed. Explain error handling in automation anywhere. Error handling in automation anywhere consists of the error handler package that comprises actions that make it simple to handle exceptions that a bot encounters and pass control to the bot's other activities. You can use the error handler actions to separate the actions that you can't use to complete a task from the actions or to handle an exception. When a bot meets an error, handling exceptions ensure that the work is complete. How is Automation Anywhere different from UiPath? On the basis of single integrated automation platform, Automation Anywhere provides intelligent automation platform like Attended Automation, Unattended Automation, Intelligent Document Processing and many more. Whereas UiPath requires third-party products and integration to deliver a similar solution. Increasing installation and support complexity. Modern architecture. Automation Anywhere provides efficient Java-based microservice architecture, ensuring scalability, reducing the cost of infrastructure and maintenance. UiPath, on the other hand, built on a legacy window workflow foundation with the last update released in 2012. The scalability is slow and difficult due to lack of modularity. Ease of use In Automation Anywhere, the easy-to-use platform enables the regular employees to create their own automation. But UiPath is targeted towards the developer community and needs more intervention from IT and development team. Most secure and compliant. Automation Anywhere provides the best in-class security standard, whereas UiPath has incomplete security certifications that create business and compliance risk. Easier to scale. Automation Anywhere quickly scales to thousands of bots in front and back office, no matter the type attended, unattended, or document processing. UiPath's architecture unable to scale horizontally and required to duplication of entire application for every service expansion. Quicker ROI In Automation Anywhere, the modern microservices architecture enables a platform to scale both vertically and horizontally, delivering faster ROI. In UiPath, with most deployments limited to a single digit, large-scale deployments become difficult. Explain JavaScript package in Automation Anywhere. The JavaScript package contains actions that allow a bot to run JavaScript. On Windows, Linux, and Unix-based devices, these activities can launch JavaScript. The JavaScript includes the following actions. Open. This action opens a JavaScript file in Automation Anywhere. Close. This action closes the session and specifies the same session name from the open action. Run JavaScript action runs a function within the JavaScript. Now let us look at some of the advanced level Automation Anywhere interview questions. How to write inline scripts using Python command in Automation Anywhere? Step 1. Create a new bot. And Step 2. Drag and drop the following actions. That is Python script, open execute function and python script close. Finally, add a message box to display the result variable. Let us go to the automation anywhere control group. So, I have already created a bot. I will open that bot. Search for the Python script package. From the Python script package, drag and drop the open function. 
In the open functions, specify the session name. If you already have an existing file on your device, then select the import existing device and enter the file path. Or you can enter the input manually. So I have entered the input manually in which I have defined a function, function which I have named it as name and I have called an argument called string and I have returned that argument. So select the Python runtime version. In my device Python version 3 is installed so I have selected the 3 and then drag and drop the Python script. In this enter the session name and enter the name of function to be executed. As you can see here in the previous open action, I have entered the function name as name. So, en enter this in the Python script action. Enter the name of the function, then argument to the function. Create a variable. So, I have created a variable and named it as Python variable. So, and I have assigned the value to this variable. And I have assigned the value called thanks to this variable. And then in the display message, enter the variable which you had created. So we had created the variable python variable and assigned it. So enter the variable, just a second. So select the variable and then close the message box after 10 seconds. Then once you open the python script then we have to close the python script as well and the session name should be the same. So for in detail explanation and better understanding check out our tutorial on automation anywhere using python. Check out this video in which I have explained all the steps in detail how python is used in automation anywhere. So now we will click on save and we will click on save and run this. Downloading dependencies, downloading dependencies, and here you go. The message from the bot is being displayed as thanks. This was the value which we had assigned to the variable, and the window will close in 10 seconds. How to create a credential in automation anywhere? Step 1 Navigate to Bots and go to the Credentials section. Then enter the credential name and a description for the configured credential. Then enter the attribute name and supply the description for the attribute. Then select the external key wall. Then select Input, Standard or User Provided. Set the security and click Create Credential. Let's go to the Automation Anywhere and create a credential. In the Control Room, Go to manage. In the manage, you can see credentials. Click on credentials. And if you, if you go here, you can see create credential. Click on create credential. Enter the credential name. Enter the credential description, which is optional. Then scroll down and enter the attribute name. Whatever the attribute you want, enter the attribute name and enter the description, which is optional and provide the input. Either you can keep the input standard or user provided. When you keep the input as user provided, when the credential is added to the locker, an email will be sent to the consumer of the locker. So you will receive an email. But we don't want to receive an email, so we'll keep it as standard. And enter the value. So enter the value of the attribute which you are creating. And you can keep the value masked. When you keep it masked, the value gets encrypted. Usually we use it for passwords. When you enter the password, we encrypt the value. That is why we select mask. And you can create the attribute like this. And if you want, you can create multiple attributes. Click on plus and you can create the multiple attributes. Once you have created the attributes, then when you scroll up, here you can see this option create credential. This option will get enabled. Then you click on create credential and the credential gets created. This is how you create a credential. How to set up a locker and assign credentials? Step 1. Create and assign roles. Step 2. Create a credential. And step 3. Create a locker. So it is very simple. Let's go to the control room. Go to the credential sections. In this, you can see the lockers option here. Go to lockers and 
click on create locker. Once you click on create locker, enter the locker name, enter the description. So in the credentials, whatever credentials you have created will be shown here. So I have already deposited this credential in the locker. That is why it is disabled for me. So once you have created the credential, check this box, select the credential and click here to deposit this credential in the locker. Once that is done, go to the owners and select the owner. So your owner uh, email address will be shown here. Select that email address and deposit that in the locker. Once that is done, go to managers. This is optional and this manager is not enabled in the community edition and even the participants. This is also not enabled in the community edition. So skip these two steps and go to consumers and in consumers, check the community edition user and deposit that in the locker. Once this much is done, you can see this option create locker. This option will get enabled. So click on create locker and the locker will get created. Check out my previous video on Automation Anywhere Excel operations in which I have shown how to create a credential and how to create a locker in detail. Create a bot to log in web page using Automation Anywhere. Actions used in the above question are as follows. We will use the browser package that contains actions that enable you to download files, find broken lines and launch a website. It contains a capture action from the recorder package to capture an interaction with the user interface object such as text box, button, table, etc. Let's go to the Automation Anywhere control room and create a bot to log in web page using Automation Anywhere. So this is the login bot which I have already created. You can check out our Automation Anywhere tutorial in which I have detailedly explained each step how to create a bot to log in inside any web page. So basically in this, we are using a browser action. In the browser action, we will open it in a new window. We will browse in the Google Chrome. You can select whichever you want. For now, I have selected Google Chrome and select the link to open. So in this project, I will log in inside the Simply Learns web page. So for that, I have selected the link that is the link in the Simply Learns. So go to the Simply Learns web page, go to the login page. And I have copied this link of the login page. So I have pasted the link to open here. Then I have used the recorder package. From the recorder package, I have used the capture action in which in the first action, I'll capture the email address. In the second capture action, I'll capture the password. In the third capture action, I'll click on the login button. So I have captured this three action. So let us save and click on run. Here you go, it has opened the web page in the new window. It's entering the email address, password and clicking on the login button. And it has logged it inside the Simply Learns web page. And your bot has run successfully. Create a bot to merge two data tables from a different Excel sheets into a new sheet. So to merge two data tables together in a single data table, in Automation Anywhere, we use merge action from the data table package. So let's go to Automation Anywhere. So I have the two Excel files, file 1 and file 2. So in file 1, I have six rows of employee names and salaries. In file 2, I have five rows of salary of salaries and employee names. So I'll merge both these tables into a new Excel sheet. So for that, let us go to let us go to the Automation Anywhere control room. You can check out our Automations Anywhere Excel operations video in which we have explained all the Excel operations and actions in detail. In step 1, I have selected the file 1 that is I have opened the Excel file 1 and assigned it a get multiple cell actions and close the file. Similarly, in step 2, I have opened the file 2 and similarly assign the get multiple cells and close the file to. Then from the data table package, 
from the data table package i have used this merge action this merges two data tables together in a single data table so i have used this so i have used this action so i'll disable the other actions click on save and run the file So the Excel bot is running and a new file named, uh, named as result will be created on the desktop. So the bot has run successfully. Let us go to the desktop and see the result file which got created. Let us open this file. And here you can see both the data tables have been merged into a new Excel files. Six, first six rows from the file one and the next five rows from the file two have been merged into a single data table. How to remove duplicate rows from a data table in automation anywhere? To remove duplicate rows from the data table, use remove duplicate rows action from the data table package. As you can see in this data table, there, there is a duplicate row named John, which is repeated twice. So let us go to automation anywhere and perform action to remove these duplicate rows. So let us close this. So if you go to the data table action here, you can see remove duplicate rows. So double click on this and then you will get the du double click on remove duplicate rows. And in du remove duplicate rows, select the data table name. So I am selecting the data variable which I had created. So just specify the data table name and the automation anywhere will remove the duplicate rows. So let us click on save and let us run. Here you can see the Excel bot is running. It, it is opening both the Excel files. It is checking for duplicate rows and your bot has successfully run. So let us close this and go to desktop. And here you can see the duplicate row has been deleted. So there was one more duplicate row with the name John. So that row has been deleted. So this is how you delete duplicate rows in automation any. Anyway from the excel from the data table the last question how to sort data in a data table using automation anywhere to sort data in a data table automation anywhere provides a sort action from the data table package so if you look at this data table you can see the salaries column the salaries is not sorted so we'll sort the salaries column in the descending order the employee with the highest salary will be at the top and the employee with the lowest salary will be at the bottom. So let's close this and we'll enable this sort data action. So what you have to do is select sort data action from the data table package. Once you select this, specify the data table name and the column name. So we want to sort the column salaries. Then select the order in which you want to sort. We'll sort it in the descending order. Click on save and click on run. Here you can see deploying to the computer, downloading the dependencies and the bot is running. So your bot has run successfully. Let's go to desktop and open the file results. And here you can see the data is sorted in the descending order. The employee with the highest salary is at the top. Similarly, in the decreasing order, the employee with the lowest salary is at the bottom. So let's begin by understanding who is an RPA developer. Now, generally speaking, an RPA developer is someone who works cross-functionally with business operations and business analysts to create and optimize workflow processes. However, this is a relatively new career path and many organizations' formal titles for RPA developers differ. Now, other similar positions may include titles like process designer or automation architect. But no matter the title, the role of a successful RPA developer involves to design, develop and implement RPA systems. In order to automate a business process, an RPA developer will be required to create workflow diagrams and strategically document the implementation. 
he is also responsible for bug fixes so coding skills are important now in order to be a successful rpa developer you must have the ability to navigate various appropriate technologies such as ui path or automation anywhere next up is rpa growth projections now looking at the curve both rpa software and services increased by huge amounts between 2016 and 2020 and beyond according to mckinsey research knowledge and work automation could have an economic impact of about 5 to 7 trillion us dollars by the year 2025 it will touch more than 230 million knowledge workers which constitute up to 9% of the global workforce now any company which is labor intensive where people are performing high volume high transaction functions will boost their capabilities and save money and time with rpa now that we've established that rpa has a steep growth curve let's look at the rpa job roles that you should look out for we have the rpa developer senior rpa developer rpa process architect rpa developer senior consultant project manager lead developer business analyst and rpa data analyst now these job roles come with specific responsibilities depending on the designation however there are a few common responsibilities of an rpa developer let's go ahead and check them out now the first one is strategic planning skills now planning is a crucial phase in any development life cycle the rpa developer regardless of the designation should possess the aptitude to ensure strategic planning planning includes the design development and implementation of rpa systems this also helps streamline the business next up is strong analytical skills now to understand the client's requirements and cater to the needs accordingly is crucial analytical skills are also important to predict or identify potential bugs and errors and rectify them now this skill is especially required if you're involved in the overall development next we have strong problem solving skills now this again is extremely crucial to predict any outages and they put the entire unit to overcome any unforeseen interruptions from the business perspective as well problem solving skills play a significant role in ensuring smooth conduction of tasks experience in any programming language such as c c++ python ruby java or dotnet is also important hands on experience on rpa tools and cognitive platforms such as blue prism automation anywhere ui path open span etc is necessary Communication skills are pivotal for any organization. The developer should be outspoken and articulate any new ideas. He should also be confident to raise concerns and be as transparent as possible. In the long run, this only proves to be helpful to the organization. Lastly, we have exposure to SQL. Now, experience with database, be it SQL or NoSQL, is highly preferred. It's always an added advantage if you have the knowledge about accessing and managing databases. Next up we have RPA developer salaries. Now the salaries will differ depending on your location, your experience and also the designation. Now in the US, here are the job salaries and the roles. According to Glassdoor, an RPA developer in the US earns around 76,000 US dollars per year. An RPA developer senior consultant earns around 99,000 US dollars per year. An RPA process architect earns an average salary of 95000 us dollars and a senior rpa developer earns an average salary of 92000 us dollars an rpa project manager earns around 73000 us dollars per annum an rpa lead developer earns an average salary of 99000 us dollars per annum an rpa business analyst earns around 68000 us dollars per annum and a data analyst earns around 62000 us dollars per annum moving on to india The average salary of an RPA developer is around five lakhs ninety-eight thousand rupees. That of a senior consultant, a senior RPA developer, and an RPA lead developer is around fourteen lakhs per annum, and the average salary of an RPA business analyst is around five lakhs forty thousand rupees. Now, let me quickly run you through a sample resume of an RPA developer. Now, this is just a template, and you can alter it according to your needs. First up is your general information like name, phone number and your email ID. Then you can give a quick description about yourself and your strengths. You can also mention the objective as to why you're applying and what you're looking for in the organization. You can include your LinkedIn profile link and your GitHub link. 
One look at your LinkedIn profile is enough for anybody to gather all the information necessary. So make sure that it's updated. Moving on, you could mention your experience. Now here you would have to mention the names of your previous organizations along with your designation and the tenure. You could also include your key responsibilities in these organizations. Along with the responsibilities, you could also mention the awards that you've received in your organizations. Next up is your educational background. You can mention the university that you graduated from and this requires that you have a degree in computer science. You can also go ahead and mention your GPA. The next section is skills. Now this is pretty crucial. In the technical skills section, you could mention about different RPA tools that you've worked on. If you're good at a particular programming language, go ahead and mention that as well. As mentioned earlier, any experience in database management is an added advantage. If you have any experience, go ahead and mention that. Moving on to non-technical skills, you could mention any extracurricular activities that you're proud of. Some soft skills that you feel worth mentioning can be added in this section. Mentioning the languages that you know can also boost your resume. Now given all this, it's fundamental that you do not lie on your resume. First, let's understand who an RPA developer is. Now generally speaking, an RPA developer is someone who works cross-functionally with business operations and business analysts to create and optimize workflow processes. Now, however, this is a relatively new career path and many organizations' formal titles for RPA developers differ. Now, other similar positions may use titles like process designer or automation architect. But no matter the title, the role of a successful RPA developer requires specific skills and best practices like documentation and planning. Now, in order to automate a business process, an RPA developer will be required to create workflow diagrams and strategically document the process prior to implementation. Now, he may also be responsible for testing and bug fixes, so coding skills are also important. Now, in order to become a successful RPA developer, you must have the ability to navigate through appropriate technologies such as UiPath or Automation Anywhere. However, there are a few prerequisites to become an RPA developer. Well, it's not very hard, but a little prep is necessary. So let's go through them one by one. First up is strategic planning. Now, planning is a critical phase in any development life cycle. The RPA developer, regardless of the designation, should possess the aptitude to ensure strategic planning. Strategic planning basically includes design, development, and implementation of RPA systems. This also helps streamline the entire business to optimize the efficiency. Next up is analytical skills. Now, again, as the name suggests, it's crucial to analyze the information and make decisions to maximize your efficiency, right? Now, these are skills that one develops when they're exposed to it. So over a period of time, you're going to develop these skills. Not to worry about it now. Next up is problem solving skills. Now these skills are again crucial to predict any potential outages and equip the entire unit to overcome any unforeseen interruptions. From the business perspective as well, problem solving skills play a significant role in ensuring smooth conduction of tasks. Experience in programming languages like say C++, C, Python, Ruby, Java is also crucial. Next up is hands-on experience on RPA tools and cognitive platforms like Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere, Redwood, OpenSpan, etc. Now, other general skills include communication skills as well. Now, this is pivotal for any organization. Now, the developer should be outspoken and should articulate new ideas. Now that you're familiar with the skills required, let's look at the job description for an RPA developer and some of his responsibilities. So here's a screenshot of the job advertisement posted by IBM. As mentioned, some of the responsibilities include crafting automation process solutions, coding and scripting in any of the automation tools, configuring new automation using core automation tools, communicating with business analysts and clients, building and documenting best procedures, 
supporting the operational teams during any rollout phases, supporting existing processes and implementing change requirements, and successfully managing any sort of issues. So if you're aspiring to become an RPA developer, then these are some of the job responsibilities that you will have to readily take up. If you're still wondering if this field has scope for development in the coming years, let me clarify it for you. So let's go ahead and look at the RPA growth projections and salary. According to Gartner, robotic process automation software grew up by 63% in 2018, making it the fastest growing segment of the global enterprise software market. Now, the growth curve has also been steadily increasing since 2016 and continues beyond 2020. Now, it is also predicted that RPA will touch more than 230 million knowledge workers, which constitute up to, say, 9% of the global workforce. Now, any company which is labor-intensive, where people are performing high-volume, high-transaction functions, can totally benefit from RPA. So, if you're still skeptical about picking up RPA, I hope this clarified it for you. So, moving on to salaries. In the US, the average salary of an RPA developer is around 76,000 US dollars. The average salary of an RPA developer in India is around 6 lakh rupees per annum. So the companies that are readily hiring for RPA developers are IBM, Capgemini, Infosys, Volvo and Accenture among others. Moving on, here are a few tips to kickstart your RPA career. So let's go ahead and look at them one by one. First up is to choose your RPA platforms. Now all RPA tools have graphical user interface or GUIs, but it's really helpful to understand the underlying technology. Now this comes in extremely handy when the developer has to create more complex, say personalized or advanced bots. So if you are a Python developer, then you can start off by working with Argos Labs. So this allows the developers to build plugins with almost no effort from the existing Python code. So if you're a Python developer, then you can start off by working with Argos Labs. Now this really allows developers to build plugins with literally no effort. And if you're a .NET developer, then you can start off with UiPath or Automation Anywhere's community editions. So if you're a Java developer, then you can start off with Automation Anywhere. And if you're a developer with no experience, then you can begin with any of the leading RPA providers. Now, tip number two is to start building. There are plenty of free materials and guides to help you begin your RPA journey. So some of the famous or well-known RPA tools are Blue Prism, WorkFusion, UiPath, Automation Anywhere, etc. So just start working on them. Tip number three is build your GitHub repository. No matter how small or simple you think your project is, go ahead and put it on your GitHub repository. This totally adds credibility to your profile. Even if you're attending interviews, one look at your GitHub repository is going to make them realize how good of a developer you are. Tip number four is to take up freelancing projects. Now again, to start off, you can take up, say, non-paid or even low-paid projects. Some of the websites that you could look up are Upwork, Freelancer, TrueLancer, People Per Hour. So tip number five is to start a blog. Now having your own blog will add credibility to your profile. No matter how less you worked on any projects, you can go ahead and type in all the information you want. Recruiters can also have a glance at your profile you're definitely going to get some extra points for this. Tip number six is to ensure you update your resume and profile. Now keep your resume and profiles updated on all job portals like LinkedIn, Indeed, Simply Hired and Monster. So these were some simple tips to help you become an RPA developer. There are several RPA courses that you can take up. But if you're looking for a well-curated, concise syllabus, then you can head to our official website and type in RPA. So let's do that. Now 
you can go ahead and search for RPA. Now a list of courses will appear and depending on your requirement, you can go ahead and choose the appropriate one. You can also go through the overview to understand what's covered in the course. So with that, we have come to end of this Automation Anywhere full course. If you enjoyed watching it, make sure to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to never miss an update. Thank you so much for being here. Watch out for more videos from us. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn.